Assalamualaikum and welcome to this video. I am Ahmad Ridwan bin Mamat from Physics Unit KMPK. In this video, we are going to go through experiment 3B, the principal conservation of energy. What we hope you to get from this video is that you can appreciate the importance of practical sanction in facilitating your learning of physics, hence making the learning meaningful. Because some of the apparatus might be foreign for you, we introduce them in the video. Reading the procedure with no background knowledge could be confusing and intimidating. So, we go through the setup process for you and we hope the procedure will make more sense for you. We are not going through the procedure step by step, but rather we are giving you the overview of the experiment and some tips to help you with the experiment. Make sure you have the lab manual and journal book with you. You are going to need your journal book to jot down the important information and tips as you go along this video. Before going to the lab session, make sure you have the objective, a brief summary of the procedure, and table for data collection is ready in the journal book. And add sketches as a visual tools to help you visualize the procedure better. In this experiment, we are going to verify the law of conservation of energy by using the law to find the value of gravitational acceleration. Open the manual and go to the figure 3.1 in the manual. Look at how the falling at height h is drawn in the diagram. The falling height is measured from the center between the two sensors and the steel ball and distance s is measured between the two light sensors of photogate A and B. At high H, the gravitational potential energy of steel ball EP is equal to mgh. It is at static, hence its initial velocity u is equal to zero, so that the kinetic energy also ek is equal to zero. When the steel ball released, it falls with gravitational acceleration g. When the object reaches at velocity detector, its velocity is V and the kinetic energy at this point, EK is equal to 1 over 2 mv square. Based on the principal conservation of energy, the gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Hence, EP is equal to EK. MGH is equal to 1 over 2 mv square by cancel out the mass m so we got v square is equal to 2gh to see how the manipulative variable the height affect the velocity the responding variable we will plot them in a graph from the equation that we have established earlier we can plot the square of velocity against height Compare the equation with the straight line equation. The square of velocity will take y axis, the high will take the x axis, and the value of c is equal to 0. When plotting your graph, make sure the graph occupy at least 80% of the graph paper. To calculate gradient of the graph, choose two points along the line and draw right angle triangle connecting the two points. Make sure the size of triangle is at least 50% of the size of the graph. The gradient of the line can be calculated using equation m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The gradient of the graph will be equal to 2g. Rearranging the equation, we got g is equal to m over 2. You are going to compare the value of g obtained from the graph with the theoretical value gravitational acceleration. Before we continue with the procedure, I want you to pause the video. 
open the manual and go to the procedure section of the experiment. After you have read through the manual, you can come back again to the video. Hi, welcome back. If you have read the manual, these two statements will make a lot of sense to you. In the experiment, you are going to manipulate high and then record the time interval between the sensor detector. How many readings you need? You can refer to the manual. Data collection section record the value of S. Repeat the measurement of time twice. Find the average and then calculate the velocity by using formula V is equal to S over T average and then calculate value of v square. Make sure the value is written in standard form. Enter the exponential power in the bracket at the top column if present. Let's go to the apparatus and experimental setup. This is Digimeter. Digimeter will be used as a timer. This is the power button. Input A is for start trigger. It has two input jack. And input B is for stop trigger. It is also has two input jack. The time will be displayed here. This is the function button. Switch on the power button first. And Set the function button to the stop stop trigger. This is the reset button. This is called electromagnetic steel ball holder. Press the top button first and then Attach the steel ball at the bottom. To release the steel ball, just press this button. There are two photo gates. Photo gate A and photo gate B. The cables from digimeter connected to the counterpart. Retort stand is used to hold the photo gate and the steel ball holder. Secure the photo gates to the retort stand. At the end of the cables, we have two types of port connector, 6 pins connector and 5 pins connector. The 6 pin connector is connected to the counter port. And the 5 pins connector is connected to the light gate of input A. Use the second cable with the 6 pins connector connected to the counter port of photo gate B and 5 pins connected to the light gate of input B. When the switch is on, the sensor of both photo gates would be light up. Set the function button of Digimeter to the start stop trigger. We can test the photo gate sensors by moving hand across the sensor. The reading of the time would be displayed on Digimeter. Press the reset button to set the timer back to zero. We are going to secure the steel ball holder to the retort stand and attach the steel ball to the holder. Measure the vertical distance between the two light sensors of photo gate A and B. Then measure the height from the middle section of the photo gate to the steel ball. The time interval between the sensors will be displayed on the timer.